Hi, Joe Alden MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the Book Excellence Award-winning fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook and designer of quality medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. Residents in Gulf Coast states are being warned by health officials to be aware of the flesh-eating bacteria known as Vibrio vulnificus. 57 cases related to coastal waters have been reported all the way from the North Carolina coast all the way to the Louisiana border. The bacterium is known to cause, among other things, a disease called necrotizing fasciitis. It destroys soft tissues from skin down to connective tissue known as fascia. Fasciitis caused by Vibrio is not new. Dozens of cases are reported every year. Often, people are infected from swimming in Vibrio-contaminated marine waters. Others are sickened after eating raw oysters. Fishermen who have hook mishaps or are impaled by fin spines are also vulnerable. If you get it, you could be in big trouble. It's fatal in about one in five cases. So more about Vibrio vulnificus. Vibrio is a well-known family of bacteria, which includes the pathogen that causes cholera. Vibrio vulnificus, however, is a different bug altogether. It normally occurs in warm, salt, or brackish water near the Gulf of Mexico, but can be found in higher concentrations up north from May to October when the weather's warm. If you spend time in the ocean or eat seafood, you should know how to recognize it and how it spreads. If bad oysters are the culprit, common symptoms appear, well, somewhat similar to cholera. You see watery diarrhea, stomach cramps, vomiting, fever, and chills, and some get dangerous drops in blood pressure. If an open wound is the mode of entry for the bacteria, however, you'll see the typical early signs of, well, any infected wound. It'll present as a red, swollen, painful area that's warm to the touch. Expect signs to appear quickly, usually within the first 12 to 24 hours of infection. As it turns into necrotizing fasciitis, you'll see fever and chills, low blood pressure, ulcers, blisters or black spots on the skin, pus or other drainage, diarrhea and or nausea and vomiting, and altered mental status. The infection can spread quickly enough to kill the victim within a couple of days. Death occurs more commonly in older people. Now you might ask, why is infection with Vibrio vulnificus flesh eating? because the disease process of necrotizing fasciitis degrades the soft tissue around the point of entry. This includes the skin, fat, blood vessels, nerves, and muscles. It does this in several ways, by producing toxins. Vibrio vulnificus releases potent toxins called hemolysins and cytolysins, which rapidly cause the death of cells. Secreting enzymes. Vibrio produces enzymes that break down proteins, collagen, and collective tissue in the skin and muscles. Evading the immune system. The bacterium's capsule helps it evade the immune system, allowing unchecked spread and triggering inflammation. The infection triggers a major inflammatory response. It also travels through the blood to sites that are distant from the wound. That's bad and it damages extremities to the point that amputation may be required. In some cases, more than one limb is lost. Now, I have a side note on this. In the TV series Walking Dead, a character underwent an amputation of a lower limb bitten by a zombie in order to prevent the pathogen from spreading. With necrotizing fasciitis, this strategy isn't much different if standard medicines fail. In my wound care classes, I often mention the case of a girl named Amy. She fell from a zip line in Georgia about a decade ago, sustaining a laceration on her thigh that was closed by 22 staples in the local emergency room. Unfortunately, closing the wound only sequestered the flesh-eating bacteria in her soft tissues, which then traveled to different parts of her body. She ended up with both hands amputated, as well as parts of both legs. Strangely enough, people who take stomach acid-reducing drugs like Prilosec, Pepsid, and others may be at increased risk for infection because stomach acid actually helps kill harmful germs before they get in there. Now, other bacteria are known to cause necrotizing fasciitis. They include Group A Streptococcus, Eremonis hydrophila, Clostridium, E. coli, Klebsiella, and Staph aureus. Luckily, there's no evidence that necrotizing fasciitis is transmissible from person to person. It's not contagious and can be treated without major risk to the caregiver. People with less severe stomach infections usually recover on their own after a few days. 
Standard treatment for diarrhea is the usual, well, treatment. Keep the patient as well hydrated as you possibly can. For wound cases, a doctor prescribes antibiotics such as doxycycline or ciprofloxacin early in the disease process. In the worst cases, however, surgical removal of non-viable tissue, that's called debridement, or amputation is required. Access to intensive care gives the best chance for survival. Now let's talk about prevention of Vibrio infection. Given the severe nature of necrotizing fasciitis, it really is important to know how to prevent a Vibrio infection. Those with open wounds such as scrapes, cuts, recent tattoos, or piercings should avoid swimming or wading in warm marine waters. If exposure to marine waters is unavoidable, cover any open wounds with a waterproof bandage. Wear shoes if you're wading to avoid cuts from rocks or shells on the bottom. And avoid direct contact with floating algae like sargassum, especially in South Florida where Vibrio vulnificus has been identified commonly. Don't consume raw shellfish taken from warm coastal waters during the summer months. Cook them instead. Boil shucked oysters for at least three minutes or fry them in a, for at least 10 minutes at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. You also want to wear gloves when handling raw shellfish and wash with soap and water when you're done. Now one interesting fact is that there's apparently a connection between hurricanes and Vibrio infections. Cases spike during and after flooding events from hurricanes, especially in the region of the Gulf of Mexico. In 2022, there were 38 cases and 11 deaths attributed to Hurricane Ian, despite warnings to avoid contact with floodwaters, particularly for those with open wounds. Spikes in cases also occurred after Hurricane Katrina in 2005 and Hurricane Irma in 2017. That's according to the CDC. Fortunately, necrotizing fasciitis caused by Vibrio vulnificus is very rare. The family medic, however, should recognize when their family is at risk and take preventive measures as needed. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hi, Nurse Amy here. Just wanted to remind you guys not to forget to visit store.doomandbloom.net for all your holiday shopping, gifts for birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, any day actually. If you want to help somebody survive a first aid issue, make sure you go to store.doomandbloom.net.